2024, not 2032, 2024. That's this year. Canada's failure to do that is it makes it an outlier in this alliance, an outlier on the side that Canada normally wouldn't be an outlier. Canada has obligations, not to the United States, not to Donald Trump, but to 30 other NATO members, and it is failing in those applications. I think it is wrong to think that this has anything to do with Donald Trump. It has everything to do with your own responsibilities as a member of the alliance, and frankly, given the threats, and I think Ambassador Kraft was right, given the threats that you face in the Arctic and other places, spending more on defense, you don't do as a favor to others, you do it because it's important for your own national security. I think the reason, uh, it, it, General Leslie, that I bring it up in the context of, of Donald Trump is because it's also, by Kelly Kraft, for example, being explicitly tied to the economic relationship, which you know is, is at the forefront given the threat of tariffs and NATO. And he's, and you know, to, to Ambassador Deldo's point, he's not the first person or that, you know, people associated with Trump are not the first pe people to associate our economic relationship with defense spending. Uh, but I, I, I guess I, I wonder how, from your perspective, realistic you think it is that Canada complies with, with this, e even though the threat of, you know, economic, so something punitive in the economic realm is there, it's also very expensive to even meet the target by 2032. That's what the government will, will certainly tell us. Right. I, I believe that the federal government has entered sort of a whining, an unpleasant stage in its evolution where they're now whining that they can't meet that which they've been promising to do since 2014. And the current prime minister has promised this every year he's been in power. And now suddenly in 2023, he realizes, good heavens, what follows 2024? I think we owe NATO some money in terms of investment in our defense capabilities, which we have not done. Right now, Canada is struggling to maintain 2,500 troops, air, land, and sea overseas. Our frigates are older than the sailors of Salem. We can only afford to have one modest-sized warship as our contributions to the entirety of the Pacific region. Our Arctic is undefended. We have 300 armed forces administrators. We've got about 1,600 rangers armed with a rifle and a skidoo, and their job is not to deter, it's to observe and report. Russia has between 25 to 35,000 troops in their Arctic Circle. And the Americans, bless them, have 22,000 superbly trained, well-equipped people in Alaska, their Arctic, who are actually defending us. And the Americans, predating Donald Trump, are sick and tired of us not paying our fair share. Uh, Ambassador just, Elder, as, as you... Yeah, go ahead. Go, go right ahead. Yeah, I mean, I just want to add, add, add to this. I think the reality is, is that Donald Trump actually uh, is not particularly interested in Canada spending more on defense because he's not particularly interested in alliances. The reason that Canada needs to get serious about defense and needs to get serious about defense together with its European and other allies is because the, uh, the Trump administration, this particular Trump administration, is going to be no friend of NATO. It's going to be no friend of alliances. Uh, the idea that you can rely on the United States, whether it's the 22,000 troops in Alaska or indeed the 100,000 troops in, uh, in Europe, to be there to defend the interests of, an, of, uh, of the Europeans, which I happen to believe are also American interests, but I don't think Don Donald Trump believes that. Uh, he believes that Europe should be defended by Europeans. Uh, he probably believes that Canada should be defended by Canadians just as he thinks Americans should be defended by, by America. Under those circumstances, the era on, on which Europeans and, and Canada have relied on the United States as the security guarantor, and in fact, the, the force that will defend them, that era is coming to a close. Uh, that's the reality. And if, if Canada can says, we cannot afford 2% of GDP to spend on defense, well, can you afford to keep country? Because that's what you're really talking about, given the threats that, that we're facing and the reality that the United States can no longer be counted on as an ally. So under those circumstances, not just what NATO needs, it's not just what Canada, uh, what, what the threats are, it's what Canada needs to do. I think I, General Leslie wants to jump in on that point too. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I would just like to build on the whole idea of strategic risk management. And what we're facing is an unparalleled immersion of threats um, not the least of which Russia, China, Iran, and a variety of other dictatorships, all of whom seem to be coalescing around the idea that the rule of law no longer holds true. 
the president of the United States, their first job is to take care of America. And then after that, it's discretionary. There's every instance to believe that we should prepare for the case where the United States starts to withdraw from international commitments in terms of blood and treasure assigned to defend others. And I believe the current government has made the reprehensible error, despite evidence that could have guided them if they'd been willing to listen, to invest in our defense so that we have our defense capability, which we can use to help others should we choose to do so, to take care of ourselves. Because the era of relying on the United States to defend us in the face of all adversaries may be over. I just have time for one quick question uh, for Ambassador Delder. The, the government will say, and I, I posed part of it already, how expensive it is that there are a myriad of, uh, of other priorities and that they have increased spending or at least the allotment of defense dollars significantly since they came into office. Of course, that still puts that target out till 2032. What, what would you say um, to respond to that? So the government faces the same problem that every other government faces. Canada is hardly the only country that has competing uh, uh, financial interests, whether it is social, uh, uh, pensions, health, what name it. Every government has that. And yet somehow every government, or at least all the major governments in Europe, have been able to get to the 2%, even though they face similar backlogs of, of underinvestment. That includes Germany, which is this, week, this year spending 2% of GDP because it promised to do so. It says in 2014, after Russia first invaded and seized Crimea, that we would reach 2% by, by GDP, uh, GDP uh, by 2024. Canada signed on to that agreement. It had 10 years to figure out how to get there. And to say in 2023, sorry, we need another nine years, isn't good enough. The reality is it's not about how you spend it, it's that your security is being eroded uh, in a way that will not benefit the Canadian people. If your security is eroded, then your health care and everything else will fall by the wayside too. It is job one of the government, and this government has not done what it promised to do, and it needs to do that. Not because the U.S. asks it, not because NATO asks it, but because it thinks and said that that was important and it agreed to it. Okay, I'm going to leave it on that note. I appreciate both of you making the time uh, for the conversation tonight. Retired Lieutenant General Andrew Leslie and former U.S. Ambassador to NATO Evo Dalder. Thank you very much. It's one of Donald Trump's favorites. To me, the most beautiful word in the dictionary is tariff. And you'll be hearing a lot more of it with the incoming president promising to implement a minimum 10% tariff on anything imported into the states. But how would that work? American companies importing goods from Canada, as an example, would have to pay the U.S. government a tax of at least 10% of the value of what they bring in, driving prices up for U.S. consumers, and in Trump's view, making American businesses more competitive. We're going to bring thousands and thousands of businesses and trillions of dollars in wealth back to the good old USA. Trump also wants to rip up a deal he previously signed, saying he'll renegotiate the new NAFTA, which on top of tariffs could crush the Canadian economy. The Liberals say they have a plan, but won't share any details. Tariffs or uh, thickening of the border between Canada and the U.S. will inevitably hurt American workers, American uh, jobs as well. U.S. workers could also get hit if Ottawa applies reciprocal tariffs, like they did in 2018, when Trump slapped them on Canadian steel. We did respond with dollar-for-dollar dollar retaliatory tariffs because we knew it was important to defend the national interest. Eventually, both sides drop the tariffs, but this time, don't expect the same treatment from Canada's largest trading partner. We understand that uh, the agenda is America first, which means no friends, no allies. Friends?